PC, accounting for your future. Hi, this is Dave from APC. So I'm the course director here at APC, and in this video, we are going to be starting to look at the introduction to the paper F2 of your ACCA, which is the management accounting. So, the difference between the management accounting and the financial accounts that you will be able to learn in the F3 is that the management accounting is for internal use, but for the financial accounting on the other hand, it's for tax purposes. For example, for example, we're going to prepare the statement of financial position, statement of profit loss, in order to show how much taxes the company is going to pay to tax authority in the paper F3. But in the paper F2, for the management accounting, we are going to prepare those records to be used by the management within the business. So the management accounting, which is the internal accounting that the company is going to use. But what do I mean by management accounting? So management accounting is something to do with the planning, decision making, and controlling within the business. So, for example, I am a CEO of the Apple PLC, I hope. So we are going to manufacture this iPhone. So if I'm going to manufacture this iPhone, we have to rely on our management accounting record. So why this is the case is because we like to use the records to plan what we're going to do. For example, we are going to uh, manufacture this iPhone. So iPhone is what I mean by costs object. Why this is the case is because we need to estimate the costs in manufacturing this iPhone. For example, how many people we're going to employ in order to manufacture this iPhone? For example, look at the labour costing system. How much we're going to pay for those labour in order to motivate them to manufacture the iPhone for me? And what are the prices we're going to spend in order to buy those raw materials such as the plastic, such as the glasses, in order to manufacture this iPhone, in order to make the button as well, in order to make the screen as well? So those are the things that is within the planning stage. So within the planning stage, we're going to start to talk about the costing. There will be different costing methods that, it, that you can use in order to estimate the cost of this cost object. So for example, we're going to use the absorption costing. So why this is the case is because if you can think about it in, in this way, not only are you going to buy the raw materials such as the plastic in manufacturing this iPhone, but also you need to lease a factory in order to have the factory and in order to have the machinery in place in order to manufacture this iPhone. If you're going to lease the factory, you have to pay the rental expense, rental expense per annum. Even though you incur no production at all during the year, but you still have to pay those rental expense to a less sort, for example. And if this is the case, for example, the rental expense is $1,000, how are we going to allocate this $1,000 into different uh, you know, iPhones? So for example, you produce 500 iPhones, it will be 1,000 for the rental, so 1,000 divided by 500, which will give us two. Am I right? Well, maybe I am correct to some extent, but from the modern manufacturing's perspective, not only are we going to manufacture this iPhone, but we've also got other staff into supporting the business, for example, the staff doing a lot of research and development, the staff doing quite a lot of HR issues in, to manufacture, I, I mean, in to employ those people in order to work for us. And as a result of that, by simply allocating those $1,000 to the number of products we produce, such as the 500 iPhones, may not be quite accurate. So as a result of that, not only are we going to use the absorption costing system, but also we're going to use the activity-based costing system to help us do the planning. So why are we going to plan? is simply because we have to know our costs. For example, our cost of ma manufacturing each iPhone would be $5, for example. 
As a result of it, we can set up our selling price based upon the cost. Because, for example, we like to make 30% of profit based upon this $5, uh, $5. As a result of that, we're going to set to the same price of $6.5 per iPhone. So the reason why we're going to plan a cost, for example, is we're going to use this information to estimate how much money that we're going to charge to the customer. So that's the costing in the first bit. Once you know our costing, the next thing we're going to do within the planning stage is what we're going to do with the budgeting. So what do I mean by budgeting? Is where we're going to forecast how many units that we're going to produce and what are the total costs that the company has to incur. Uh, also what are the estimated selling price that the company would like to sell to the customer. And once you've used those estimated sales revenue minus the estimated costs that the company has to incur, which will give us the estimated profit that the company is going to make. And as a result of it, we're going to use those information to plot into the budgeted statement of financial position, showing the budgeted asset liability as well as the equity. We're going to also prepare the budgeted statement of loss, showing the budgeted uh, profit that the company is going to make. And also we're going to show the budgeted statement of cash flow. We're going to use that from the investment decisions point of view as well. So those are the planning stage that you need to be able to look at. Within the decision making, of course, we're going to use those information that we've done in the first place into making our decisions. For example, we can have a look at from the marginal costings perspective, whether or not we should make our products in-house or we're going to outsource it to somebody else who will do that for me. For example, Apple. So I'm the CEO, suppose, of the Apple PLC, and I'm considering whether or not we should manufacture this iPhone here, or we're going to outsource this activity to somebody else. For example, we are in the HK, the labour rate is relatively high. So we're going to outsource the operation and manufacturing of this iPhone or equipping the iPhone work to the staff in India, for example, where the labour rate is slightly lower in order to save our costs. So within the marginal costing system, we're going to use the marginal costing techniques in order to make the decision for the company, such as, for example, just we talked about the make or buy decisions. Maybe we're going to look at, well, our company has quite a lot of limited scale resource. So for example, the time is the scale resource within the company. And as a result of it, how are we going to use up our time in order to maximise the profit we can make? So those will be the decision, uh, which is the limiting factor analysis, we are going to be starting to look at in the uh, later sections. Not only for that, but also we're going to have a look at the pricing decision as well. For example, we know the costs of this iPhone. So the next question should pop up into our mind is that whether or not when introducing the iPhone into the market, whether or not we should set the prices too high or we're going to set the prices too low. Which option are you going to choose? Well, maybe you can say to me, well, Steve, I'm going to set the prices too high. It's simply because we expect the product to be replaced by some other products later on, and hence we expect the prices to fall again and again. So that we're going to set to the prices too high, so that firstly, we don't have to manufacture quite a lot of these iPhones, because setting up the prices too high, maybe not many customers will buy for it. And as a result of that, from a company's point of view, it's less risky than we started to produce quite a lot of iPhones at the start. So this is to some extent is, you know, is the strategy that is using by the, uh, by the Apple PLC nowadays, and that is called the market skimming. Of course, we will be able to look at that when we come to this particular section. And for the third one, which is the controlling the business. So what do I mean by controlling the business? For example, we're going to deal with the variance analysis. So what do I mean by variance analysis? It's the difference 
analysis. So variance is what I mean by difference. For example, we budgeted to spend $5 into manufacturing this iPhone, but we actually spent $12 to do that. This means we budgeted to spend 5 but we actually spent 12 This means that we have spent $7 more than we expected. Whether or not this is good. Of course, the increase in costs would decrease in the profit that a company is going to make. But if there's an increase in costs, we are measuring the performance of the production manager. Is the production manager doing a good job or a bad job? What do you think? Well, if there's an increase in costs, maybe it can suggest the fact that the production manager is not able to negotiate the prices really well with the seller, for example. And hence, this will increase the cost up and decrease the profit the company is going to make. And as a result of that, of course, it's not very, very good. And we're going to say to the production department, uh, we're going to say to the buying departments, for example, you haven't done a good job, so that I'm going to cut your bonuses. That's what I mean by variance analysis. We're going to compare the budget information with the actual information so we can identify the difference between these two so that we can use this difference, either it's good or bad, to measure the performance of the managers. Not only for that, but also we're going to be able to look at some other performance measurements techniques such as the balance scorecard to measure the performance of the managers. So a balance scorecard says not only you need to focus upon the financial bit of the company but also you need to focus upon the non-financial bits of the company as well. So such as, he, such as in the IT company, for example, although you have made such a high profit in this particular year, but it does not necessarily mean that you can continue this high profit at some point in the future. Well, maybe if you haven't spent quite lots of money, into the learning as well as the innovation part within the company, for example, we happen to spend quite a lot of money into doing those research and development of the project. As a result of that, we cannot continue the high profit at some point in the future, and that is not particularly good. And hence, we're going to use quite a lot of these models in order to make sure that we can properly manage the business in order to help the company success. So that's the overall aim of the management accounting. So management accounting in recap is just to be the internal accounting that is used by the business. And all we need to be able to know is that when we are using the records from the management accounting, we can help the company to success. So that's the introduction to the paper F2. So in the next of our section, we will be starting to look at the costing in much more detail. Thank you. APC, accounting for your future.